All right, so this is from scenario one, okay? So when you go to test this scenario, okay, 10 minute time limit, you're just gonna knock this stuff out, okay? If you go step by step in order, everything gonna turn out all right, okay? The life threats we treat as, as we find them, okay? The minor things we can work on as we're, we're getting to the hospital and stuff, okay? So this scenario, 26 year old male um, hit by a car on the highway, okay? Mm -hmm. So we start off with scene safe, MOI, NOI, number of patients, additional resources, and BSI for me and my crew. We're simulating BSI on this one, all right? <coughs> Next thing is our general impression, okay? General impression is we have a 26 year old male laying supine on the ground, does not appear to be moving, okay? Sir, sir, can you hear me? No response, we're checking out food, right? No response, okay? He didn't notice me coming up, he didn't get a, a verbal response, so A and B is gone. Before I can move on, I gotta have my partner take C spine precautions. Sir, my partner is gonna hold your head and neck in line, make sure you don't hurt yourself. He's gonna take C-spine precautions, okay? Then I can come up. Sir, sir, are you all right? Can you hear me? Okay, and I'm gonna do a trapezius pinch, okay? Trapezius pinches, check for painful stimuli, okay? The patient moans, okay? So the patient is responsible to painful stimuli, okay? Because he has an altered mental status, this is a load and go situation, okay? We're gonna get through this really quick. We're gonna get him on the ambulance because he has an altered mental status. That's one of our criteria for load and go, okay? Next thing I'm gonna look for is apparent life threats, okay? Do I have any gross bleeds or anything, okay? Anything that can keep this patient from getting oxygen, um, gross bleeds, we're gonna look for. If we see something, okay, okay. If I see, if I see, looking for my, my, my gross bleeds, that his arms cut off or his legs cut off above the knee, right? That's a gross bleed. That's a life threat. That's something I have to deal with immediately, okay. okay. At that time, I can reach in, get a tourniquet, okay. Mm -hmm. Hold direct pressure, get a tourniquet, put it on, stop the bleed, right? Then I move up to my ABCs, okay. all right? Check to see if my airway is open and clear. If my airway is not open and clear because this is a trauma, we have to do the modified jaw thrust, okay? Our patient, our, uh, our person holding C-spine can do that from the top, okay. okay? This patient, the airway is open and clear, okay? So I move down to my breathing. Breathing, I'm checking for breathing rate, rhythm, and quality, mm -hmm. okay? All I'm gonna do, Listen, look, listen, feel, mm -hmm. all right? Breathing rate, rhythm, and quality. He's breathing 22 times a minute, a little shallow, okay? okay? So at this time, I noticed that there's a problem with the breathing. It's not in our normal range, mm -hmm. okay? I'm gonna get back to that in just a second. I'm gonna hurry up and I'm gonna check circulation, okay? He is breathing, mm -hmm. right? So I'm gonna move on and check circulation, all right? On a trauma patient, if they're not unresponsive, I'm gonna check bilateral radio pulses, okay? If they are unresponsive, I'm just gonna get a carotid, okay? Bilateral radio pulses, they're weak and threatening, okay? Then I'm gonna check skin color and temp, okay? This patient is pale, cool, and diaphoretic. He's going into shock, okay? I don't know what type of shock and stuff he's going into, I just know he's going into some type of shock right now, okay? So, we got rid of C, right? Mm -hmm. Then I move on to D and E. Deformities, do I see any gross deformities or anything? Okay, nothing really noted. Um, and then I'm gonna expose my patient, okay? So the They're not? Second life threat. It, well, no, it doesn't have to be a life threat. A deformity can be, um, I noted that this leg is angulated. Okay. Okay. 
it's it's deformed. I just think okay, I want the demon. it's something I can just see while I'm looking at them. That okay, I, I've got a problem here that I know I'm going to have to address. Okay. okay, and I'm exposed. I'm going to give my patient trauma naked. Okay, okay. patient's not naked. I, I got a deformity down here. Okay, I'm going to deal with that when I get to it. Okay, I'm going to have my partner start getting some vital signs. First one I want you to get is a pulse ox because I need to address this breathing problem and I need to see what my baseline vitals are first. Okay, so give me a pulse ox, then give me blood pressure and get the rest of them. Blood glucose, pulse, all that good stuff. Get it all good. Pulse ox first. Okay, so you're getting a pulse ox right now and then getting a blood pressure and all that. Okay, while you're doing that, I'm going to move from my head to toe. All right. Start with my head, deformities, contusions, abrasions, punctures, burns, tenderness, laceration, and swelling. Moving posterior to anterior. Okay? I'm going to check the eyes for pearl. I'm going to check the ears, the nose, the mouth for any CSF, fluids, vomitus, teeth, whatever it is. Okay? Nothing noted. Okay? By this time, I should have my pulse ox back. What's my pulse ox reading? Okay, it's going to be 86. Okay? 86 is not that good, so I'm gonna go ahead and have you uh, start bagging, okay? Or my next, my next responder, start bagging for me. I want you to give me a bag valve mask. I want you to breathe for this person one breath every five, six seconds on 15 liters per minute of oxygen, okay? While they're doing that, and you finish getting my vital signs, okay? So I'm gonna go here, I'm gonna check the neck. Deform, uh, DCAP BTLS. Okay, and I'm gonna check to see if the trachea is midline. Mm -hmm. Looking for jugular vein distension. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm also looking for subcutaneous emphysema. Okay, if all that's clear, DCAP BTLS, I'm looking for step offs. Mm -hmm. Okay, because a lot of people wanna say I'm checking for step offs. If I check DCAP BTLS, a step off is a deformity. Okay, so it's part of that. Okay, so I check, all right. Nothing noted, no tracheal deviation, no jugular vein distension, no sub subtense emphysema, no step-offs and stuff. All right, so I'm gonna reach over here, and I'm gonna measure and apply my C-collar, okay? Okay, my C-collar is now on. Now I can move to the chest, okay? Always make sure you check the clavicles, okay? One of the easiest bones in the body to break, especially with trauma, okay? So I'm gonna check the clavicles and the rest of the chest for DCAP BTLS, mm -hmm. okay? I'm palpating. Of course, we're exposed already, okay? Looking for the deformities, contusions, abrasions, punctures, burns, tenderness, laceration, and swelling, all right? I don't see anything. Okay, next thing I'm going to look for, flail chest, okay, paradoxical movement, and subcutaneous emphysema again, okay. If I get some kind of puncture in the lung or something like that, air is going to rise to the highest point. The highest point when this patient is laying down is their chest right here and their neck, okay. So if they've got air leaking out, I'm going to be able to hopefully feel it here, okay. Then I'm gonna get my, my stethoscope, all right? I'm gonna listen for lung sounds, mid-clavicular, mid-clavicular, because we gotta compare upper lobe to upper lobe, mid-axillary, mid-axillary, okay? Checking lung sounds, all four fields, and then I'm gonna check for heart tones, okay? And the heart tones is just so you can get a, a better feel for how the patient's heart is working, okay? After I get that, get that done, Okay, I don't notice anything going on here, or if I've got some paradoxical movement, something like that, mm -hmm. I can take care of that real quick. Okay, I need to put a pressure bandage there or whatever it is. Okay, then I move down to the abdomen. Abdomen, I'm gonna palpate all four quadrants. Okay, coming down, coming down. Okay, what am I looking for there? I'm looking for rigidity, tenderness, bruising, and pulsating masses. Okay? If I have a pulsating mass, what does that mean? 
a lower aortic uh, aneurysm, right? So if, if we we get something like that, our patient's in bad shape, we got to go, all right? So I finish with the abdomen. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come into the pelvis, I'm gonna push down and in, checking for cre crepitus and stability, all right? If that's stable, if it's a male, I'm gonna do a priapism sweep. If it's a female, I'm gonna look for blood or any other kind of fluid, okay? Um, don't know if she's pregnant, what's going on, so I'm gonna look for blood and fluid, all right? After that, I'm gonna move down to the legs, all right? This right leg is deformed, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna check a pedal pulse on that, okay? If I don't have a pedal pulse, I get one chance to straighten it out, okay. right? As it is, okay, I may still wanna straighten it so I can get them up on the backboard and stuff, right? Mm -hmm. So I look, he's got some bruising, some swelling up in here, all right? I'm gonna shift this nice and gentle. Okay, he's gonna moan, mm -hmm. groan, because it hurts. Mm -hmm. Then I'm gonna check my pedal pulse again, mm -hmm. all right? So it's DCAP BTLS, check pedal pulse again. You can check cap, cap refill if you want, mm -hmm. Babinski, however you wanna do that, okay? Mm -hmm. But the main thing is PMS. Okay. I'm gonna move to the other leg. DCAP BTLS on down, PMS, mm -hmm. okay? Then we're done with the legs. All right, then we're gonna move up to the arms. We're gonna decap BTLS, get a pulse again. Mm -hmm. I always like to do them both at once. So I go over here, okay? And then check to see if I get any reaction, pulse motor sensory, okay? Then I'm gonna come down here, decap BTLS, pulse motor sensory again, okay? Once I'm done with that, it's time to log roll, okay? So if you've got some Injuries on this side, right? We had the deformed leg and that kind of thing. That means I want to roll them toward me, okay? If you had injuries in this stuff, then I have to go to the other side and roll them the other way. Okay. If he's got a fractured hip or pelvis or bilateral femur fractures, okay, then we need to scoop them, okay? So since this patient had this leg was messed up, I'm gonna take the backboard, slide it around to this side. I might have my partner come around to this side. All right. The main person gets a hand on the shoulder, hand on the hip, all right. The other person gets in between there. And then on the head man's count, we're gonna roll them up toward us and put them on our leg, okay? One, two, three. All right. If I move my hand from this shoulder, it's automatic fail. Okay, so I come with this hand, decap BTLS and do a sweep, looking for anything as far as I can reach. Now I can only reach down to about his knee, so I'm gonna say, partner, finish up from the knee down, see if you see anything. All good? All right, so now we're gonna put him on the backboard. Okay, and we're gonna put him down on one, two, three. All right, and if we have to shift him, because he's already up so high here, we're gonna shift him down on the head man's count. One, two, three. And then we're gonna shift him back up and center on head man's count. One, two, three. All right, cool. Now, we can strap him in. Mm -hmm. So we get strapped. All three of them, just one. Yeah, we're just gonna play, okay? So we strap him up. All right, starting at the torso. All right, we wanna be about his chest level. We don't want to impede his breathing, all right? Because we're already having problems breathing, all right? While so I'm, while I'm, huh? Underneath her, uh, underneath her breast, if it's full of It depends on the size of the woman, okay? The best, best place to do it is right underneath the armpits, okay? So that would go above yours, okay. right? Um, so we're gonna strap them in, watching their breathing, okay? While I'm doing this, okay? And, you, and if you're helping doing this, I have my other person go ahead and get get another set of vitals because I want to see how his breathing and stuff's improving, pulse ox, blood pressure, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Also, while you're getting a set of vitals, okay, because we know he's shocky, he's pale, cool, and diaphoretic, mm -hmm. and we got we got a blood pressure earlier. Blood pressure was low, mm -hmm. okay. Start an IV, okay. 
So we're going to finish getting them strapped on. Okay. Uh, that should take no more than a minute or so. My person started an IV for me. Okay. I got a second set of blood pressures. His blood pressure hasn't improved. It's still low. I'm going to give him a 250 ml bolus. Okay. Because we want to get that blood pressure up between 90 and 100 systolic. Okay. And we kind of want to just maintain it there. Okay. <laughs> if if there's nothing seriously wrong with them, okay, if they're a trauma, if they just broke their leg, okay, their blood pressure should be a little bit high to start with, okay. Yeah, if their blood pressure is low, exactly, from the pain. If their blood pressure is low, it means we might have some bleeding internally. They may be going into some kind of shock, okay. okay? So I'm going to give them 250 ml bolus, see if the blood pressure improves um, while I get them on the back of the ambulance. And then we're going to see if we can get a sample history, OPQRST, see if the patient is starting to give me a little um, feedback, uh -huh. okay? Because once we start giving them oxygen, everything's getting a little bit better. We're going to check his mental status and stuff again, 